had that initial beat, that, that groove. I have a photographic memory of it uh, in our rehearsal space, the West Beth basement on the west side. He's like, I got this groove, and I'd be like, whoa, that's, that's so, that's badass. And almost simultaneously just join in with them, and we'd come up with these whiffs and grooves. Pseudo prog rock, weird timing, staccato style that just came about it was a little bit based on the Bad Brains. We just took it to a whole different level. Uh, this song, Prime Cut, is a, a good example of that, and uh, the title track. We signed the record contract Friday the 13th of October, and then the next day, October 14th, 89, we were in the studio. Quickly got some money and ran up to uh, Providence the next morning. We recorded Normandy Sound. I think we got the idea to record there from the Cro-Mags and Leeway were up there. Our A&R guy, Bob Feinagle, who signed us to Epic Records, uh, was really in on us going up there. And Mark Dodson, who produced the record, wasn't really familiar with it. Their big claim to fame was New Kids on the Block. And the studio was great. Uh, apart from all some of the sessions getting erased by this guy, Jamie, who was the assistant. And I remember Mark Dodson kept calling him, Jamie, Jamie. Uh, they had a residential room upstairs where we partied. The idea of being sober and straight edge was a joke. Like, we would, we would make fun of people, like, we would do that. And we, Ted and I were more of the crazy, absolute, insane people when it came to everything else. Like, we didn't have any stop signs back in those days. We would just take it to the, the max all the time. Life for dear life. When Dotson came around, he was just like saying, you know, Mike really can't sing and this is a problem. He spent a lot of time trying to get vocal performances out of it. It was unfortunate. I mean, Mike was a great guy and like he was smoking a lot of cigars at that point. So we took a picture of him smoking cigars as the back cover of the record, which looked badass and was cool. But, you know, that, that nicotine, it sort of stays in your throat, you know, and, and, and it, uh, you know, you don't really inhale, but it, it caused a lot of problems when we try to cut vocals and he was like puffing on a cigar and that was the only tension I remember in the studio and like Mark was like you know what Tommy you need to go in there and do this vocal I was like no dude like you know Mike this is Mike's lyric and you know he needs to do it Prong was really like the first band I played guitar in and uh, I was just learning as we went I had a really good Plexi, a Marshall Plexi, and uh, it was 100 watt. It didn't have a master volume on it, so it just jumped the channels. It was an amazing amp with just a boost on an, um, a TC Electronics distortion boost pedal, which just crank it up a little bit before you go into the amp. I had a Charvel back then. Everything was in E back then. That was the only thing we thought of. The gear was simple. It's a Marshall 4x12 and the Plexi and this TC box. Very clean. Sometimes I listen to it and I go, how the hell would I play the guitar on this stuff? It's like, uh, it's just bizarre to me. It just seems like another person or it doesn't even seem like it's me when I listen back to it. It's uh, another time, another place. Uh, I sort of forgot about that record for a while and revisited it. And I was like, this is just, it's just mind boggling. cover of Beg to Differ is still pretty iconic, I think. I mean, we still sell that shirt, and it's it does really well. It's a Pusshead design. I mean, if anyone's not familiar with Pusshead, he did Metallica and Corrosion of Conformity and was a, a, a very major, important artist in the punk rock skate community back in those days. And uh, he was always a huge supporter of Prong. I mean, uh, we sent him a demo when he was working at Thrasher. It did the reviews, too, and he reviewed the initial Prong demo for Thrasher and loved it. And uh, we stayed in touch with them. We asked him to do a cover for, for Beg to Differ, and um, he said, hell yeah. So uh, almost like a Hindu slash punk rock version of uh, Prong in the front there, so I, I, we really love it. With a Rorschach test Prong logo silhouetted upon our faces.
I was working as a sound guy at CBGB, and uh, I realized that people would start going crazy during these certain interludes of the songs for other bands when I would throw this gated reverb on it. Uh, Steve McAllister, who was the head engineer at CBGB's, and he actually worked on Force Fed, Prong Record, previous to Bake to Differ, and also Prong 3, which is an EP with Third from the Sun on it. McAllister did a lot of work with COC, was their live sound guy for years, and uh, he was the guy that showed me how to do it, and he guided me through a lot of those early years with CBS, I didn't know what the hell I was doing, but he was the hardcore matinee guy before me, and I learned stuff from him, but I used the whole gated thing to an excess that <laughs> more than he, I, he ever did. So when we went in and recorded uh, this record, and we were doing the mixes, uh, I suggested, Mark was like, you know, let's make this, just do something with this, and without sounding like Metallica or whatever, like with the kick drum, and I said, well, let's try this and he was like well this is great i mean he loved the idea of having this gated verb on there it took people by surprise but uh, it definitely came from the hardcore matinees at cbgb and what i would put on you know mosh parts for leeway and token entry and the rest of the bands that i was mixing back then <laughs> i remember when we uh, signed the record contract with Epic, which was originally CBS Records, and the three of us were there, and we were all getting along fantastically at that point. And we, it was just nothing but fun back then. And uh, I remember our lawyer, Elliot Groff, he's going, okay, well, uh, the fun's over. Now here's the hard part. Now you're on a major label. And we were like laughed at him. We were like, well, how bad can it be? And um, soon, soon enough, like all the, the, the BS started. It was, and you know, inevitably, we did not get along that great. keep things easy for myself so I don't know just to keep barring things all the time uh, gets in the way of my performance a little bit so uh, whenever I can thumb it so I'll bar with my thumb section I want to go over too. Go for it. Which uh, has that off time. I think it's in 3-4. Three, 3-4. Four, three, four, and then I use the thumb again on that where it's just like a... hammer-ons on there too. I'm not plucking every string. And solo. Based on that riff. <laughs> 